Hi, I'm Brian Lane, Senior Product Manager of Imaging Software at Schneider Electric. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up an adaptive motion analytic. So at this point, you should be on the analytics page of your web GUI. To get there, you want to use the uh, settings pull down and go to the uh, event tab where you'll see the analytics. Okay. Once you're in here, you want to make sure that you've already gone through and set up your profile settings. There's a video on how to do that if you haven't already done so. Make sure that your analytic profile is running. So come over here where it says select behaviors and select adaptive motion. Now there are three things that you can do on adaptive motion. You can set up a, a, a rectangle zone. You can use a polygon if you want a bit more precise zone or you can set up somewhat of a trip wire. You can draw a line um, to trigger when someone walks across it or drives across it, for example. Now, if you want to capture motion in a larger area, you probably want to choose a box or a polygon. If you're just trying to capture whether someone walks or drives past a given area, you might just want to use a trip wire. In this particular scene, what I'm trying to do is I want, I'm trying to capture this entire area. I want to capture a car going through this area. So I'm going to draw a rectangle through this area here. So you simply click on the rectangle, grab and pull it with your mouse to create a box. You want to make sure that in this particular box, which is a zone, um, you don't get any anything that, that could be moved by wind, for example, like leaves or grass or bushes. So I want to keep within the zone here. I'm going to tighten it up a little bit. Okay. Now it's going to say zone one. You might want to name the zone something that's a little bit more uh, uh, easy to remember. So in this case, I'm going to put down car motion. Okay. Now you can also uh, select a direction. Now this will only trigger an alarm when the object is moving in the direction of the arrow. So for example, if I choose this particular arrow right here, anything that's moving from left to right in the scene will get triggered. Anything moving in any other direction will not get triggered. Um, there is a directional motion uh, analytic. If you're really concerned more about the direction of, of an object, you might want to use that particular analytic, which is more designed for a direction. In this particular analytic, I'm just going to select all because I'm not concerned with direction that, that a car is going to go through this. Okay. Uh, the next thing that I want to do is I want to create an exclude zone. Now what the exclude zone actually does, if I draw this here, you grab it and pull it. What this does is excludes anything in this particular zone that like, for instance, leaves on the trees, you know, for example. All right. The next thing I want to do, I'll click on my car motion here is I want to enable the alarm which is already preset. This will generate an alarm that has been received by the head end. You set up your head end to do whatever you want when you receive an alarm. For example, start recording, close a relay, put a red box around the video window, or you can set up your source and handler to have the camera run some kind of an action. The alarm severity, it's preset to minor. You can choose minor, normal, major, or critical. Now what these actually do is this is to tell the head end how critical the alarm is. Now based on what you choose, the head end will generate some kind of an action. So I'll set it to normal, for example. The next thing is dwell time. The dwell time actually defines the time in second that the alarm triggered zone turns to a normal state. So it's preset to 5. I'll change it to 10 seconds, for example. The last thing we're going to do is we're going to use an object size filter, and that is right down here. Now, this is to tell the behavior what the minimum and maximum size of the object is. Now, it's best to use a live object if you can, because the perspective matters. For example, if the object is this particular size, you need to put it in perspective with the scene. Now, this is a global setting. So what I want to do is, in this scene, I don't want any human beings to trigger. I only want cars to trigger the adaptive motion. So this is approximately the size of a small car. 
and I can change the perspective however I'd like to match that. So this will be the minimum size of an object, okay? So for example, this size here. The maximum size of an object is this green rectangle. So if I have a truck going through it, for example, I don't want anything larger than this to go through, I could do that. But I'm not really too concerned because I'm only trying to trigger cars, trucks, any kind of vehicle going through here. Okay. Now after you've done this, what you want to make sure that you do is you click on activate behavior. You want to make sure that you are actually running your profile. And then you want to save down here. You want to click on save the current profile. Okay. Now that you've done this, your analytic now is now live. And you can be able to see um, what happens um, by going over here to your live tab. Okay, under your live tab, if you click on primary stream right here and say select stream, you can choose event stream. If you click on select, anytime someone now drives through this, this particular scene, it will go ahead and trigger an alert. So as you can see here, uh, a car came through that particular zone, and here in the event stream you can see it says car motion which is what I named it. And it says Adaptive Motion Detected East Parking Storage, which is the name of the uh, profile, triggered in car motion, which is what I named the zone. Okay, that basically is how you set up uh, Adaptive Motion using a Cerex camera. Thank you.